<laughs> Welcome to the Town of Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting for July 27th, 2022. The time is uh, 6.02 p.m. This is a hybrid meeting um, on Zoom and here at the main meeting room, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. Meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the Governor Baker's June 16, 2021 Act, extending certain provisions, certain uh, COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency, including an extension of the remote meeting, uh, remote participation provisions of his March 20th, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20. We also are going to update that, right? Or does it is it still continuing his 2020, right? We don't have to extend because they just they just he just signed another extension, right? It's, it's till March 2023. Yeah, till March 20, but it's still his 2020 yeah. extension, yeah, right? It's yeah. Still his 2020 order. Okay, good. Just wanted to kind of clarify I that. We fixed that, but I'll check. Yeah, we did get language back from Lisa. You did. So you the, just have to say it's March of 2023 until March of yeah. 2023. Yeah. Okay, we fixed it on like five other ones. We're fixing on five others. So. Sounds good. So the uh, remote meeting connection uh, information is located on the um, on our agenda, which you can always find at the Town of Deerfield website, right under the calendar. Uh, there's there's hyperlinks there uh, to our Zoom meeting. Um, you can dial in. There's a um, uh, toll free number of 833-548-0276. Our meeting ID is 911-604. 1580 and should you need the passcode it's 570012. So meeting attendees should meet their uh, mute their phones, uh, which is star six for landlines unless asking questions or commenting. All attendees should uh, wait to speak until other participants are finished and then just state your name and where you're from. So I'll call the meeting to order. Uh, our first order of business is to um, have public comment. So we have um, up to 20 minutes with each speaker, approximately two minutes. So please, um, any public comment? I think we have public tonight. So thank you so much. Come on up to the mics and um, just state your name and where you're from and what sure. are you? Uh, Grant by Alex 66, Sugarloaf Street, Deerfield. Welcome Grant. Uh, thanks. And, uh, I have a statement that I'm, I'm going to read Please. just a comment yeah. um, jointly uh, produced by members of the Deerfield Inclusion Group. Okay. So first, thank you for your continuous hard work and efforts to keep our community safe. Um, tonight, uh, we want to bring to the select board's attention the rise in white supremacist, anti-Semitic, homophobic, and racist incidents happening in town. There have been incidents of swastikas made in both public and private settings, stolen and defaced Black Lives Matter signs, and anti-LGBTQ graffiti found in Deerfield over the last two years. These incidents in our community reflect a growing problem in Massachusetts and the nation and a rise in white nationalism. It's important to focus on the systemic nature of these together and address them as a community to learn, plan, and take action. We ask that uh, you as our select board leaders and community caretakers lead the way in ensuring that Deerfield is a safe community for all now and in the future. The members of the Deerfield Inclusion Group dig, appreciate, and value the Select Board's commitment to community safety, and we would like to offer our support and resources in your efforts to confront and prevent hate in Deerfield. DIG has many members with a wide range of community-based experience, promoting equity inclusion, and organizing for change. We hope you will consider our offer of support and the following recommendations. Discussing the rise of white nationalism at upcoming Select Board meetings and other public forums developing town protocols and procedures that prevent and address incidents of hate, reviewing available state resources, including a section on how communities can respond to hate incidents and hate crimes, publicly sharing your plans as you develop them and inviting input from those who are most impacted and making a public statement to town residents that Deerfield does not tolerate racist, anti-Semitic, homophobic or other forms of discriminatory behavior. In this statement, we hope you will inform residents that everyone has a role in standing up the hateful acts and that keeping Deerfield safe is the responsibility of the entire community. Um, and lastly, we hope that the select board is able to reply formally to this statement uh, within a month of tonight's meeting. Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, I'm happy to provide this written copy of oh, that. And it does have, have my it. name and address at the bottom. All perfect. perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Grant. Um, we try not to respond to public comment, but I, I do want to say that Please. Trevor and I um, 
uh, not last year, was it two years ago? Um, we, we were really impressed with the National League of Cities. Um, uh, they have like a, pro it, it's for larger communities, obviously, but they have a program and we were very interested in getting someone here. And um, we would like to see if we could get a grant um, to do it. It's, it's pretty expensive, but um, the but city grant. of Lexington, oh, no, was it Arlington or Lexington? I think it was Lexington, I one of those tens. Yeah, it was one of the, either Arlington or Lexington. Um, it, it was very impressive. And we, we felt um, that was the way we wanted to go. Um, and then COVID hit. And so we really haven't pursued it. <laughs> but okay. um, I, I think we would like to tr try something like that. So if you could uh, let Casey have that letter, that would be very nice. Absolutely. Thank you. Any, any other comments? Well, I wanted to just follow up. And Please. I am supporting these grant methods that come from DIG. And, yep. Um, and I'm Lou Vincent for the record. Um, Thank you. Media field. Um, so I just wanted to, to just take a second to say, like, you know, there's like some benefit. We just, this is like a tricky place to navigate, right? Like, I understand that as town leaders and as community members, it's a hard place to navigate. How do you handle something like this? We don't know if this is one individual is having a hard time. We don't know if this is happening randomly. You know, there's a lot of things that need to be kind of like ascertained in, in our understanding of the situation. But what we do know is that on a national level, there is like, a, there's almost like a permission for this sort of loosening of, of care and consciousness and, and a real like, just an unbending of the rules around really important things and anti-Semitism and racism and home, you know, homophobia. So I just feel like as our as our microcosm, as our little space that we have some control over, that we come together as a community and really excited to be a part of like keeping the light alive here, keeping it, you know, hoping that everyone will be educated and connected as we like really focus on the good of our community and being educated to how to prevent these instances from happening and what we do, you know, why do we do what we do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for coming. Any other? Oh, yes, please. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Deborah Yaffe. I'm from 87 Hillside Road. And I'm a retired psychotherapist. And I've dealt a lot with trauma and trauma from systemic racism, anti Semitism, homophobia. And it's really rampant, as you know. I mean, unfortunately, incidences are not going to decrease. It's going to happen. And I think it's an opportunity for, Deal, for Deerfield, for you, for all of us, but for you as leaders to kind of take a stand. Here we are. We're going to celebrate 350 years. And it's time to take a step forward. Um, creating safety, creating community can really have a positive impact for everybody. You know, I think about the LGBTQ community, kids of color, how did they feel when they saw, you know, the swastika? And so it's something, I mean, I appreciate, I appreciate what you said about a grant, Carolyn, being interested in what other towns have done, but we can come together. We have a lot of resources right here, all mm -hmm. of us, um, to come together and look at policies and how do we want to respond and how do we want to create safety um, for everybody and make a stand that, you know, Deerfield's going to stand up for everyone. Um, so I want to encourage you to think about that. We'd like to, and I'm supporting Dick in the, in the statement, and we'd like to actually um, have uh, an agenda item to have further discussion. So I request, okay. thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other Hey, Lisa. Hi, um, I'm Lisa Middens, 80 North Main Street. And I just want to um, underscore how much I support the idea of our town doing a public statement against white nationalism and racism. I have a, I studied at the master's level race in the 20th century, and there's definitely documented evidence that when governments take a stand against racism, it does trickle down to the people who are 
committing racist acts. It might not change their minds, but the signal that the people in charge and the authorities don't mm -hmm. support this kind of thinking and these kinds of behaviors is very, very powerful to do as a community. And that DIG has a lot of resources for language, and I don't think that would be very expensive. And to me, that would be a great mm -hmm. baseline from which to, um, to start. So thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. And again, because we don't have it as an agenda, we won't be commenting on it now, other than to say we absolutely uh, abhor racism yeah. and um, there's no place fit in Deerfield. And I would like to, you know, I've been thinking about ways to work on um, this issue and how to address it, what the right venue for that is. Um, so, yeah, we'll address. Thank you. Any other public comment? Anybody else want to? Nothing online? Nope. Okay. Well, thank you all for your comments tonight. Um, so we have a couple uh, scheduled uh, appearances. First, uh, John Reno is here to talk about the Veterans Day 5K and 10K race. So come on up, John. How are you again? It's good to see you yearly. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm John Reno. I live at uh, Fort Gramacki. Lived in Deerfield since 1971. So, uh, here I was born. <laughs> few years, few years, a little bit of a native. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Friday, uh, November 11th, Veterans Day, um, 5K, 10K, put on by the, um, well, put on by me, but I guess working for Massachusetts Senior Games. Yeah. So, um, it's an event that would qualify people to go to the National Senior Games next summer, next July in Pittsburgh. So um, kind of excited about that. My yeah. wife and I did the um, triathlon last season. We went to the National Senior Games this past May down in Florida and had a great time. Good. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, as far as the race, um, the, um, we pulled it off last season, last year with no problems. Um, the, the thing that the, um, I, I was always under the impression that um, I, I requested to close Park Street from eight to noon. And um, that was the thing that I always thought was this sort of um, request here. Mm -hmm. um, I will contact yeah, John yeah. Pachorek for you, but um, Park Street, of course, is part of the state um, highway. So, um, but I think I we've think done that in the past without. Year, right? We did yeah, it last yeah. year, yeah. And we've done yeah. It for short and, times. And the like... chief, chief of police was on the, and the superintendent so, and the. The chief, the superintendent, and the paramedic. Chief. Yeah. Okay. We've all been notified and don't have any issues. With Great. All Perfect. Right. Yeah. 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 I'll just, yeah, I'll just make that. sure. We, uh, we just had a meeting with DOT, so yeah. there shouldn't be any issues. But, Great. Yeah. Um, we've done it for different parades or. Yeah. different things in the past yeah. for a short time so yeah, yeah. i'm sure, yeah, I'm sure it's fine okay it'll be great yeah yeah and you're in touch with the uh, chief about safety other areas or have you have you already had a conversation about where you'll set that up or i haven't talked to him this year about that okay um, yeah yeah just touch base with him or yeah just make sure that he's aware of every, all your needs and We'll try to help out where we okay. can. Yeah, yep. that'd be great. So we we, we would want some extra police details and stuff. Make sure you're so. good, good and safe. Yeah. Yep. Great. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Thank great. Thank Just you. a quick question for you. Oh yeah, um, please. Yeah. Tim, Tim, Tim. Um, this is a this is a five and a ten k for all ages, but it's to benefit seniors or is it for just seniors? That's a great question. I wish I thought of it and <laughs> addressed it myself. Um, so it's open. So it's it's all ages. Um, the um, it's all it's open to everybody the um, for the national senior games to, to that part of it that I was speaking of yep. you have to be 50 by the end of this year to go to the national so there's kind of that a little bit of the focus on people that are 50 plus but um, for, qualifying. So for, for the qualifying if they want to go on but in terms of just having it being a local race that anyone can participate in that's that's all ages. Right. That's great. And, and, so, and the entrance fee would benefit the organization. The entrance fee, yes, okay. the, right. The, any any profits would go to the Massachusetts Senior Games. Wonderful. Yeah. Great. Thank you, John. Yeah. Thank so you. buy your lace up your running shoes and uh, let's we'll see you out there. <laughs> Sounds good. You still got a couple months. <laughs> right. Get some training. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you John. Thank you very much, John. Yep. Good luck. Okay. 
Yes, and welcome Julie's to Julie up, up on the on the schedule. Yes, welcome Julie. How are you? Hi, good. How are you? Good. Um, do you want some background? Yes, please. From what we're talking about. Okay. So the Town Building Advisory Committee has been working towards refurbishing the what we're calling the 1888 building, which was most recently the senior center and has been a grammar school and whatever. Um, at last, the last town meeting, we voted funding to support moving forward on what we're calling phase one, which is to come up with a solid plan and estimate for refurbishing that building. The first step in that process was to hire an owner's project manager, an OPM. We issued a, an RFQ or refresh for qualifications. Um, the bids came in. We had three companies bid to be the, our OPM. Um, it was P3, City Point, and DA Sullivan were the three companies. Um, the Town Building Advisory Committee, supplemented by um, two other people, Tim Hilchey and Denise Mason, um, reviewed all of those bids. Um, graded them against a rubric. We called two of the companies in to interview. We checked all three companies' references, um, and we've gone through and, and analyzed them, and we have a recommendation. Um, so we're requesting that the select board um, approve us to approach P3 um, to negotiate a price. Mm -hmm. The way the RFQ is written is if we, if we can't come to an agreement with the first place company, we move on to the second place company and so on. So the ranking of the three companies, number one was P3, number two is City Point, and number three is DAS. Okay. Um, so we're seeking approval to go forward to negotiate a price with P3. That's great. Thank you for all that work. Really, and if we really appreciate to it. reach an agreement with the second applicant, we would automatically go to the third applicant, yes. or would we be up, able to do this again? No, you have to go to the third applicant okay. first, and then you have to go out for an RFQ. If you can't come to a good, this it's one. just okay. designer selection. Did you yep. um, have anything to add, Tim, before I make a motion to approve? <clears throat> yeah. Well, first, I'd like to um, thank Matt Russo, Brooke, Bill Hildreth, Greg Franceschi, Dave Wolfram, John Pachoric. Denise Mason and particularly Julie because she really organized this mm -hmm. very well and and kept the pace moving forward at a rapid. We moved. Clip. Yes, <laughs> yes. Did in a week. And, uh, <laughs> I know. I so we were quite pleased to. And I abstained last night because I knew it would come before me. Today. Right. So uh, anyway, I just wanted to say thank you to all the people who brought this forward. Yeah, we did. Perfect. Sounds um, good. I'll I will a motion. make a motion to approve um, uh, the committee approaching P three. And uh, here a second. I'll second that. Any uh, further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Julie, thank you very much. Yeah, for thank so you much so much. Work. Appreciate the work. It's uh, well, really well documented. Yeah. I appreciate that. So I have the whole packet. Do you want the yes. whole? <clears throat> and we're taking a taking a page from your book, Julie, and moving this forward quickly. <laughs> Taking a page from your book and moving this forward quickly. Yes, good deal. Thank you. Um, select board reports and announcements. Any anybody have anything they want to add? Talk about anything at all? Um, I have one thing that I was asked. Uh, Triad and South County Senior Center wanted to thank uh, Mike Kolodzies. I'm not pretty sure if I'm pronouncing this right. He's a um, uh, plant manager for the Waitley Yankee, Yankee Candle. Oh. They donated. 58 full meals that were consisted of um, barbecued chicken, potato salads, wow. huge trays of brownies, fresh rolls. And uh, so the seniors were really appreciative receiving that. And so we just wanted to, I just told um, Triad that I would say thank that you. We, we uh, as a select board also appreciate that. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. great. Yes. Thank you for thank you. remembering to do that. Appreciate that very much. Um, <clears throat> I don't think I have anything other than what's on the oh, agenda. Oh, we had, right oh. Here. Oh, well, yes. Well, there was the uh, um, oh. scenic and wild. Yes, Jim, oh, yes. Jim McGovern, hello. Jim McGovern feels was like here. last month. So the first step of the scenic and wild, wild um, designation, right? designation for the Deerfield River. Uh, we're pretty excited. We want a sustainable access. Uh, there's been multiple groups that have documented that we have access issues and mm -hmm. Even though we're like overwhelmed with things to do, I think one of the things that we've really got to push now that this bill is going forward is 
is to get DCR to um, you know work with that on that property next to Cheapside Bridge, and yeah. also come up with some way to deal with still water right. access. Yeah, it'd be great to get some some funding for those items yeah. for sure. Yep. Yeah, it was really good to have um, Congressman Go McGovern in our town again for twice in the last couple of weeks. So it's really, really good. It was uh, very nice to talk to him about a bunch of issues, but really had that, that great press conference. And also it was nice that uh, uh, Senator Markey kind of had a representative yes. here. And of course, Natalie Blay was here to yep. be a part of the- Absolutely. And also I want to thank the Affiliate River Watershed Association and Chris, Chris Curtis. Curtis in particular- Absolutely. Um, for being, picking up the mantle and moving it yep. forward. Yeah, that's great. I'd like to also thank the creative, um, resilient, resilient cre um, creating resilient communities group because that organized the communities up and down the river yeah, earlier from Irene, is. and that stepped right into the application process. So that was wonderful. It is a two state kind of thing because it all the Deerfield starts in in Vermont. So it was great to have right. Vermont representation there too. So yep. thank you. She's that's been great. working with us. Well, several Vermont <coughs> agencies have been working with us since Irene, so it, 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 would, it has really paid off. Great. Um, so Board of Health, health Agent discussion items, reports, um, announcements, well, there's a water wastewater testing. Wastewater treatment is supposed to start a Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Um, they're not going to do Friday because you can't ship out on Friday. So yep. um, they'll do Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, starting next Monday. So that's really exciting. This will be mm -hmm. our data information for, um, you know, how we're doing with COVID. It's out there still. I mean, yes. a lot of people I know have been getting it. Not, you know, they've been all vaccinated and they're still still getting it. Well, the problem well, is uh, this, the sub new sub-variants is BA5 is um, immune evasive. So even if you've had um, COVID, 15, 20 days, your immunity is starting to wane, you can get it again. Same thing with um, your vaccinations. Uh, if And as soon as you get boosted, vaccinations and boosters, it's good for a couple months, but then it starts waning and, that, and it has the ability to go around your vaccines. For the most part, it's mild if mm -hmm. you are vaccinated and fully boosted. Right. And um, there is a next strain that's coming. It's working its way through Europe right now. It's um, BA 2.75, it's the India one. And it's what it should be here in September. We were so lucky, like I said in the past with this BA 5, the schools had already shut down and we missed all this activity being in the schools. So we're still trying to come up. I had multiple meetings today with trying to figure out what we're gonna do in the schools. And I hope to have a meeting in, schedule a meeting sometime in mid August with us and our um, epi epidemiologist that's working with us as Greenfield, Montague and Deerfield. Okay. So we'll hopefully have some more things happening. I did go to a um, training yesterday on monkeypox. Mm -hmm. uh, DPH is not, saying yet that it is of concern for the school year, but we, I was on a meeting earlier today and from North Carolina and Oregon, they already had gone to the national stockpile to use the vaccine from the smallpox and they're doing it because it's of concern. So I don't know what's gonna happen. It's highly contagious. Um, it's a it's West African virus. It is not, um, I mean, it seems to be pretty mild. Last two to four weeks, that's the biggest problem. You have to be isolated for two It's not airborne weeks. either. It's not airborne. It's usually, well, there is some droplets. It can be on mm -hmm. linens and towels for like 15 days or more. Um, think of Lord Jeffrey there that went out and sure. in, in Detroit and handed out smallpox blankets. It's that kind of thing. Um, but for the most part, it is... Um, you know, being contaminated from an actual uh, lesion on your on your skin. So we're hoping that it will not turn out to be something that we have to worry about, but it's being monitored by the state. Okay. 
that's about it. Okay. Um, so we have minutes. I feel like a fireworks Sorry. emoji should go off. <laughs> Look at Alex's face. Thank you, Alex. <laughs> Thank you, everybody who worked on these. So I don't know if you want to just take the week and read them and we can do them next time or if you're good to approve these. I went through them. I'm pretty good with all of them. So I don't know if you want to just wait and do this next time or like the present. No time like the present. So I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes for March 23rd, 2022. Are we going to do them individually? Then? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yes, we'll I'll them. make that motion. I have a second. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? I will abstain since I wasn't here. Okay. I know I can approve. But yeah, I... but that's fine. Yep, no problem. Um, uh, I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Carolyn Ness. Okay. Two. Um, do you want to do the 25th? Next, yes, Trevor. please. Yep, the 25th. I make a motion for the approved minutes of the 25th. I'll second those. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Um, I'll abstain, Tim Hilchey. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um, April 6th, yep. I make a motion to approve as presented. I'll second those. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And the next one is April 13th. I will make a motion to approve um, those minutes of April 13th. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Tim McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. I can't thank you all. Oh, we got one more. April, no, 20th. April 20th. April 20th. I make a motion to approve those as well. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S. I. I can't tell you how happy I am. Just really, really yes, very, very lovely. pleased. Thank you for the minutes. Thank you, Alex. Keep going. Yep. Yeah. Rock and roll. <laughs> okay. Uh, discussion items. We have the Franklin uh, County Solid Waste Management District, uh, the MOUs for the district uh, services for approval. These are done every year and we have um we have several to go we've got um you have four right yeah do you want me to um, make a motion to approve um each one individually sure okay then i make a motion to approve this transfer station hall for the second uh, mou um yeah just a second i want to sure show, um, take a look at them well no i there was a an overall sheet Yes. That, okay, here it is. That I just yeah. wanted to. So, yep. All right. <clears throat> and um, Carolyn, you were starting with the first one. Yes, yeah, the first the one. Transfer transfer station station hauling. Solid waste hauling. management district hauling. Okay. Yep. yep, hauling. Yeah. It's for, um, you know, a bulky items, scrap metal, solid yep. waste, yep. recyclables. Um, so we have a second for that? Yeah, I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. I, I just want to state that Jana Mean from the Frank County Solid Waste Management does an outstanding job. She does. And she, uh, even with all the price increases she has in the middle of contracts and stuff, she works night and day on this. She's she does. amazing. Yep, I, definitely I, second I, that motion for sure. She's doing a really good job. Um, so I make a motion um, for the sludge hauling. Sludge hauling, which just to note that has gone up significantly for a South Deerfield plant. Um, and I'm really hoping once we're all done, we could, you know, it's all based on your percent solids. So I'm hoping with all the improvements that will kind of come down some, but it's it's a, quite a bit of an increase. Does, so. does the percent solid mean that uh, you get as much water out as possible? Yes, exactly. Yep. And um, and and less junk in it too, mm -hmm. which would be great. The problem so. is there's no there's no real place to take it anymore yeah. except for a Lowell. Right. Lowell's the only one. That's yeah, part of the I mean, that's so expensive. Yep. it's a monopoly, really. It is. So, do we have a second on sludge hauling? Uh, Tim Hilchey, I'll second that. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um, I make a motion for the transfer station inspection that is required by. DEP. Yep. I'll second that. 
Thank you. Any further discussions? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And lastly, it's um, ATW, oh, the hazard waste. Um, yeah, household hazardous, hazardous waste. Okay, so. Um, our, uh, our budget went up to um, 5,000. Is that because we've had good um, participation? I think so. I mean, we are certainly getting rid of a lot. Okay. Yeah, I was, I was gonna, actually, that was one of the reasons I was wanted to find this sheet. Uh, I know that, you know, based on population, um, we seem very close to Montague, which seems odd to me, but. Mm -hmm. Well, what, what the deal is, is how, how, how much we actually bring. Right. It, it's an average. So. As a, as a community. Right. So um, this is actually, maybe you can expand on this because I'm sure that other people listening might not know exactly what we're paying for here. Uh, so really it's, it's um, this, this one is there's, they hold them twice a year and they are um, where you can bring spring. all your hazardous stuff that you normally Paints. can't bring. Yeah. Paint. All the stuff that you can't. Yeah. Pesticides bulbs, oh. that kind of thing. Um, and they, they do Batteries. them at the Greenfield Community College and Orange Transfer Station. And I think they do electronics them. too, right? I haven't been for a yes, couple of years. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. They still something do something electronics. Like Sometimes yeah. it's really hard to get rid of electronics. And they weren't doing them through COVID too. So it might be kind of, yeah. you know, a lot of, they're expecting a lot of stuff coming. Uh, but yeah. Um, the town will be charged its proportional share of the cost of the collection based on administrative expense, the number of participants from the town, and the volume of the hazardous waste received from the town. So, so we're being yep. conscientious, and that's a good thing. I, yeah, it is I, a good thing. I, I th we've always Important. had a high participation rate. Mm -hmm. um, I just was surprised to see it go up to five thousand, but yeah, in truth, um, that's good because we're not going to see it on the roadside then. That's I hope so. So, um, yeah. but also this, if, if people don't participate, then we're, we're probably not getting, it's, it is charged on participation. So yeah. if people don't participate, adjust then it, it will get adjusted down. It just lags, that's all Tim. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. I just wanted to sure. have some explanation um, Janamine, for the public. Uh, Janamine usually has a pretty good idea of what we do. So I, I feel okay about this. So did we have a second? I can't remember. No, I, don't I don't think, think I so. made a motion. No, I'll make, make a motion. motion for the HHW collection. I'll make a motion to do that. And I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you very much. So we'll, we'll all sign these. Signing music. <laughs> <laughs> Lawrence Welby. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> we need to take the type of music you want to hear for your signing. That's funny. Okay, so the next item is a liquor license for the Franklin Land Trust, the Mill Village Road D2R2, which will be taking place August 19th and 20th. It's a beer and wine and a nonprofit request for the fee waiver. So um, I make a motion to approve um, one day liquor license for Berkshire Brew um, on August 20th and for uh, Phantoms on August 19th. I'll second that motion. With a waiver of fees. We normally we um, do. waiver. Yeah, for it's a nonprofit. Non and it's their fees. biggest fundraising event for the yeah. Franklin Land Trust. They, they, and be careful around that weekend because there will be a lot of bikes on Mill Village and they, they do a big loop. Um, yeah, but they do a good all, job of safety and yeah, good event. All over so the place. Do, you, do we know where do they actually stage their beer? Um, at, right at in the fields. The South Meadows where Yup's um, um, Former, flowers are. Or right out in the field there along Mill Village Road. It's out yep. oh, okay. down, down on the five just, just, PA soccer fields. Um, but not like right on the road. It's 
push back against the there's like a little stream back yeah. there, Tim. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's another whole set. I think there were two sets here just to make sure we had copies for everyone. Yes. <clears throat> Did we have a motion? Uh, yes, we have a motion. We and have a seconded. seconded, I believe. Yep, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Nuts, aye. And we did note uh, that they have all their insurances and stuff. And yep. Everything filled out, so we're good there. Here's the other set um, of the those things. So here are these two liquor licenses. You said Berkshire Brew is at four phantoms. It is four phantoms on one, and then I think Berkshire Brew is, Brew is doing the first day. Oh, okay. uh, Berkshire Brew, I think, is doing the oh second uh, day. Second day, the yep, second day. Yep, that's right. She wanted to get four phantoms. Oh, yes. <laughs> Those for you too. Um, we've done the 1888 building request. So the, I have a sewer abatement for Alice uh, Herman. Um, it's really it's actually under um, under Paul is, is who the uh, bill goes to. But um, Alice has kind of filled out the waiver. So this is um, the kind of apartment complex that is on or multi unit on Mountain Road. And yes. they um, had a tenant that didn't realize that their toilet was broken and had been running for a super long time. So um, they, you know, they got hit with a massive bill and because, you know, that's, it's done by water use. So um, then they realized what happened. They brought a plumber in and went through every water entity sink faucet outdoor faucet everything in the building and, and they found that that one toilet she just thought it was a loud toilet she didn't realize it was constantly running for for months and months um uh. so um so they had asked for an abatement um and so i have come up with like three different options for us to discuss so you know we always try to be fair to people um when they have you know something wrong like this you know obviously we have to support our sewer system and we do treat all the water that goes through it's one thing if you have a, a break in a line out out in your yard and it doesn't go through the system but um you know but but we we do want to be fair because when when something happens like this and they catch it they you know and show us a bill that they fixed it we want to try and um, be fair about it so i what i did was i um asked for data and i went back eight years and i took their so i have three options i took their winter usage for the last eight years and did an average. Um, and then my first option is I took that average and added 20% to that, because again, we have treated all that water. Um, and uh, so we added 20% to that and that came up with a billing amount. So the bill would normally be like $2,518.43 instead of the $10,000 and 10,000, what was it? It was $10,647. So that would be, if we did that um, option, it would be a, a rebate amount of $8,128.57. Um, and then I looked at option two would be to just to take the bill and charge them 25%. Um, of the total amount that went through, and the math was a, was close to the same. I mean, it was really twenty five percent of the six hundred fifty thousand gallons was six hundred was one hundred sixty two thousand five hundred gallons. Um, you know, per our billing rate, it was a, their bill should have been two thousand six hundred sixty one with a rebate of seven thousand nine eighty five. So, virtually the same. Second option I looked. Uh, the third option I looked at was to. Um, have a 25% surcharge on what their average eight past year bills would be. Um, again, came out to about 8,223 bucks. So, um, so I'll just recap that for you. I was trying to be fair and looking at this and 
entertain any thoughts on your part as well, but I just took their usage for the last eight years and it can vary because it depends on how many people are in the buildings, how much they use, right. all of that stuff. So I try to do as wide, you know, eight years and then took that average. Um, and then I think it's fair not to just do the average of that because you can have different years that are upper and, and down, but, but really we have treated all of that water. So it's not like, again, it has gone into the ground. Um, so I think that some fee for, for processing that is fair. And that's why I thought 20 or 25% was fine um, to, to cover that. Um, so, so really the, the rebates would be uh, 7,985, 25, 8,000, $23 or um, $8,128, all virtually close, but um, just different methods of looking at that. Are, any thoughts on that, Tim? Or yeah. Joan, or what you... well, what's your recommendation of which method do you think is the most accurate? And who checked your math? Yeah, please check no, my no, math. No. I, I don't want to do it. We got the finest in the chair here. <laughs> right. Um, I think the, um, I thought, you know, um, I thought option two with a um, taking the eight, uh, excuse me, option three, uh, taking the um, eight years was the fairest and adding a 25% charge, not the full 100% charge, because again, we have processed all of that water and um, and so, so a total rebate of 8,000 uh, $23.64. Mm. And my thought was that I thought option two would be mm -hmm. the best. And because of the fact that, as you make the point, we did process, we did process all this water treated. Yeah. And so it's actual number 25%. It's, it's in the ballpark of the other two. So it is, it's and, a, it's a rebate of, of 7,985. It's, it's a $50 difference, not yeah. even. So yeah, they're pretty close. Um, I'm, I'm fine with that recommendation. The rebate of the, the option two. Yeah. Okay. I um, mean, it is seemingly fair. So, yeah. And I think either, either one of these stands and what I, what I always, what we always try to do with these is to try and come up with, um, you know, pre setting precedent for the future. It's hard. Um, I have another, um, we don't have a rebate request on this, but I know they're going to ask for a rebate. This was a same issue where they had a toilet running while they went away. The bill's a thousand dollars, but it's usually not anywhere near that, that amount for them. Um, but again, it, it's in Snowberry Circle, which is new. You don't have eight years of service, so you can't really right. tell what they're going to use. I was just so, going to say, I That's mean, it, going to be a little clearly trickier. a problem, but clearly a problem because it's way higher than what they would normally have done. Um, so, so that'll be a little more tricky to figure out. But they have not; re they've requested an abatement, but they haven't done the abatement. Both have paid their bill, and we always make sure that people pay their bill. Then an abatement comes, even though it's a very large bill. They have paid it, and um, you know, hoping we would help them. So, um, so do do you? Uh, agree with Tim on the on yes. the option yeah. two here. I'm, yeah. I'm fine with yeah. that. Yeah, I'd make a motion to approve the option two, 25 percent charge on the actual number of gallons that went through the system. Okay, and Sounds I would good. second that. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And I just want to say thank you, Trevor, for sure. coming up with that. Yeah, no problem. I um. You know, it hurts because we, we have a lot of sewer to do. It's a lot of money going back, but it, you also want to be fair to people when uh, when they have an error like that or an issue. So, okay, so we'll take care of that paperwork. I, th I think that makes me feel, um, or one, one thing that we could say is we do treat the water, but yes. because it is water, there's no solids. Right. So we do not have the expense of the sludge. Of the sludge. Exactly. which is people should realize that that's where the huge expense is. Mm -hmm. So when we go through these rebates, it's, it's, it's not necessarily a huge detriment to, um, you know, the overall operation right. because it's sludge hauling. That is really it's, our problem. It's 12 to $18,000 every time we truck it out. And that's I a know. couple times a month. And so when people have running toilets and they're, they're charged this, 
you know, right. giving a rebate doesn't have the same impact as if as it was solids. normal usage. Yep. So yeah, I just want to clarify that yep. for people. Yep. Nope, makes sense. Thank you. Um, let's see. So we have um, the Sheriff's Department Kennel and Animal Control Services contracts. Um, I, I kind of, I know we talked about this, but not, not only did we start the fiscal year, but um, I, I feel like we need to work with Greenfield and encourage the animal control officer to be put back under the Board of Health. Um, it's been problematic ever since it went to the police department. Uh, the response has been poor. Um, but the problem with going with, I think we would incur additional costs because um, it, the Sheriff's Department is just dog related stuff. There's no animals, you know, skunks and bats and. But yeah, the, um, this is just the kennel cost. So I think regardless of whether we have, because oh, Colleen okay. doesn't take them anyways, but I agree with you. We do need to flush okay. that oh, out I'm and talk sorry. about that. I was, this I is, was looking at the right. animal control services day, contract. Correct. It's a 10 day limit, right? I think it oh, is. Oh yes, yeah. that's for the kennel. Yeah, this is just I, for the I kennel. Just, yeah. I just wanted to table the animal control stuff. Mm -hmm. That's, But I think we need to make sure we're reaching out to Greenfield. Yep. Um, and we also need to encourage the conversation with Montague so that they will reach out to Greenfield as well and right. encourage that change. Because I think once it left the Board of Health, I mean, we had good response and good, um, you know, relationship checking in and all that kind of stuff. I mean, John handles it here, but it still was a Board of Health response in Greenfield and, and here. And you know, I'm not I'm not too excited about picking up bats and skunks and all that kind of stuff as board of health. Yeah, so we could kind of flush that out a little bit further as we I mean we've got the contract throughout the year. So I mean we did it years ago, but the problem yeah. is it just it's so random when it comes and um, yeah, and I, I sort of agree with you, Carolyn, that board of health makes more sense for a lot of the uh, animal issues. And also with Greenfield's recent um, I don't know how to describe it, difficulties with the police department and funding and so forth. Um, it might actually be, uh, and lack of response. Um, you know, you need to get response. If you have a rabid animal, you can't not get response. I was just gonna say, it's very important if we have a rabid, rabid situation, mm -hmm. which, you know, it goes in cycles. And we had, we did a few years ago, and it's almost time again to be in that cycle. It's like seven year cycles. And so um, we had quite a few calls for rabid raccoons and some skunks. Or if you get a bat in the room. And that, but the know. bat in the room is, you know, if it's a bedroom of an elder person or um, a child, then it's automatic that we ship it out to be tested. Right. So, um, you know, it's just nice not to have to actually do it ourselves as mm -hmm. Board of Health. Right. The animal control officer is, is yep. a good thing. Okay, so we'll continue those, you know, yeah. conversations. Um, and, and so, do you have a? Um, could I hear a motion to approve the chair? Yes, to sign I will the I'll approve the um, dog shelter. The uh, sheriff's department kennel contract. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. I'll second that. All those. In, thank you. <laughs> All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Nessa, aye. Okay. Okay, great. All right, so that's solved. Thank you. Um, and I'll fill out this other one here in a moment. Uh, let's see. So we want to talk about special town meeting scheduling because it's getting that time of the year. Well, I sent an email out because I wanted to secure a date so that we could get to get ready in terms of planning and making sure we have counsel and the moderator and all that stuff. So I sent Scott the director an email and asked him about October. I knew that we would end up, it would probably be a Monday. So he can secure the 17th or the 24th, but I had a conversation with Carolyn and it might be more useful to be the Casey on the 24th because it gives us an extra week to develop the warrant if necessary. 
and I believe that both the moderator and council are available either day. Um, so I was just, I wanted the board to discuss that and see if we can settle on a date so that I can let Scott know and then we can schedule the moderator and council. We have, we have so much stuff going on. I, I, I would feel more comfortable so it'd be less stressful for just an extra week even to have it the 24th. So if, if we could choose the 24th with a backup date of the 17th in case, you know, that was an issue or even kick it into the first week in November. The problem is, You've you know, elections. I don't want to get into the elections because, yeah. um, you know, our, we're short staff still. Mm -hmm. So yep. the 24th seems to be more ideal. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm good with that. And just keep rolling on if you have anything else. Yeah, yep, that I'm works. And if you, and I, and I, it has I to think, be the 17th. Yeah, you know, the other too, critical but. thing is that, I mean, there seems to have been no issues in the past few years. Brenda's done such a good job on certifying free cash. It's usually done in September. Right. She's so, working on that now. Yeah, so, so I, I feel September. like as long as we have certified free cash so we know what our situation is, we can make adjustments to the budgets and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah, so she wants to have free cash done in, in early September. Yep. That'd be great. She and good I with you, Tim? Absolutely, yeah. Great. Okay. So the 24th is good for everybody. I'll yep. show you an email out tomorrow. All right. Thank you. So the next item is the old Deerfield wastewater treatment repairs uh, select board liaison. So I'll just kind of preference this a little bit. So we're um, as sewer commissioners and um, our working group, we're working on ideas and ways that we can deal with the wastewater treatment plants in old Deerfield. And um, and a lot of that discussion, so there's two parts of the discussion. There's the discussion of what we do as a town, and then there's the discussion of how do we pay for it. And um, that second discussion really uh, entails a lot on negotiating and talking with our nonprofit partners to help us because a lot of most, 98% of that wastewater treatment plant is served by the nonprofits. And I think there's a um, willingness of recognizing that they have a role to play there. Um, again, when we fund our projects, um, you know, we fund them with sewer user fees uh, is the operational every, every year to how much does it take to process all the waste and manpower and all of that. That's your operational fee and those are your sewer fees. And then anytime you spend capital, um, the sewer users, same people who pay the sewer user fees pay, um, 75% and all the taxpayers of the town pay 25%. And that's legislation from back in the 20, 1923 when we instituted a sewer system in town. So, um, and because the nonprofits aren't paying that, that amount and because it serves almost wholly the nonprofit entities at that end of town, they recognize they have a big um, uh, part to play in this. this. So um, we need, um, our staff to negotiate and work with those partners. And because there may be perceived um, conflicts of interest, not all of us can negotiate. And I think it's important to, to appoint somebody that um, one of our members to negotiate on behalf of the board and with um, Casey, our you know town administrator and our uh, Lisa Mead, our town attorney um, and others they feel important to, to be involved in that conversation, I, I would recommend that we have Tim Hilchey um, be our representation mm -hmm. on that negotiation. Um, do you, anybody else want to speak to the issue at all? I, I would be very supportive if Tim doesn't mind taking on that workload. Um, well, actually, in, in anticipation of talking about the issue, Casey and Lisa and I had a conversation this afternoon, which was very helpful in understanding the legal Mm -hmm. aspects of you know working with nonprofits and, and various structures that might be considered yeah. and then um, I'm entirely happy to do this obviously um, Lisa's uh, input is going to be very important as is Casey's sure. and um, whomever else uh, is in various negotiations uh, and discussions different people might need to be present of course so um, yes I'd be 
very willing to do this. That'd be great. I'd love to help. Um, so I'd make that motion. And I'll second that. Any further discussions? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S, aye. Great. Thank you for taking that work on. It'll be great. Super helpful. Um, so we have some uh, appointments, resignations. So first we have a an appointment. And maybe you can add to this a little bit. D David um, uh, Lawless, with David. Um, I haven't um, actually received. Uh, I've had verbal discussions with David about his interest in this, and um, uh, he was involved in some litigation. So yep. I had made a request for him to put in a, a, a letter of interest through email. I haven't received it yet, so I'll follow okay. up with him yeah. and make sure we get it next week. Sure. Uh, and, I mean, next for next meeting. Okay, so we'll hold on that one. Yeah. Um, There's no um, community preservation meetings until no. yeah, later in the year. Okay. okay. Um, so All that's right. less urgency. Okay. All right. The Conservation Commission, though, we have um, we have a letter of interest, right? This one for, um, no, we don't. No? We oh. were waiting for somebody. Um, I think Pete Law has somebody in mind. Oh, okay. I haven't heard that. Right. Yeah. We then, did. Oh, for the LLC, which LLC. was the. So I thought we had done this. I, I thought we did too. I could have swore we, we did. So it's no hurt doing it twice, right? Yeah, no let, harm let's twice. Let's do it twice. Okay. So for, this is for the. Uh, local Cultural Council. Thank Amy you. Curtis is interested in serving. Right. So and I, I did see her, her, her email. Yeah. Yep. Virtually. Yep. Okay. So um, I'll make a motion to appoint Andy Curtis to the um, Massachusetts Cultural. Well, the local local, cultural, local yeah. cultural council. I will second that and thank her very much. And I'm sorry that we have to revote it again. Yeah, I, I could have. Right. I, I know, know I, I did remember. it. We did. I know. I just didn't see things. it in my notes anywhere. So let's yeah, just do I it again. It doesn't mind. matter. It doesn't all right. Matter. We're good. Vote it. Yep. So all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you. And we do have one poll. Here's a blank. Yes. Okay. We have um, we the select board of the town of Deerfield by virtue of the authority vested in us by the laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts do hereby appoint following as poll worker for the term beginning July 1st, 2022, ending December 31st, 2022, uh, Jameson Eisler. I will second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. I just had a, a random comment. Uh, I got an email from the state uh, that we had to do some kind of training, mandatory training. It wasn't ethics training. It wasn't, um, it was something out, achieve, mass achieve. You got an email from them? Did yeah. you send it to me? And I, I yeah, well, I, well, I, I thought it was it. because I'm on the state commission. It might so be. I, um, so I didn't get one. you know, cause you're supposed to have an employee number. Oh. And I, um, I, I, you know, contacted the state commission and asked them if, if it was required for the state commission. And um, they said no, that it wasn't them. And um, so I'll, I'll send it to you because it, it is legitimate. I mean, okay. I yeah. made sure it wasn't some kind of thing, okay. and it was. It yeah, was it my kids now. checked it out. So. I have no idea why we were supposed to do that. Hmm. Not sure. I haven't seen it. We also regret regretfully have um, a resignation from the Deerfield um, Personnel Board. Uh, Erica uh, Higgins Ross is is enjoyed her service and is in her term and is stepping down. Um, and wishes everybody well going forward. So we will have a spot open if anybody uh, would love to serve I on will. the personnel board. Except that with regret. Yes, yeah, she was wonderful, a, and super helpful, and that is such a bad. Yeah, Maybe she's great. Incredible. Yep. Yeah. Well, I wish I could say no. Can I abstain no, from this vote? <laughs> Keep her by force. Um, and okay. No, she's been incredibly helpful. Yeah, she she's, has. She's moving on to yep. interesting things in her life. Good. Okay. So um, do you need a vote on that or no? No. no. Okay. We just accept, accept it. it. Regretfully accept it. Um, and I think that is. Did she make sure she turned it into the. Um, town. Yeah. Oh, okay. Town so I will, I'm going to send an email. Make sure people. Yeah, it has to go to town clerk. Yeah. Yeah. 
have no mail tonight. We're really uh, just town administrator's report or update if you want to hit us yeah. on anything. So I wanted to let the board know that Amy Hogg and Carly and Hamlin will be starting next week right. as administrator assistant and interim town clerk respectively. Um, we're working on onboarding documentation. Can around. you just say her name again, Casey? I'm sorry, I didn't catch So you. Amy Hahn is the administrative assistant. Oh, good. And Carlene Hamlin is the interim town clerk that will be starting next week. Okay. Is that H-A-H-N? H-A-M-L-I-N. No, I mean the first one. Oh, Han. H-A-H-N. Yep. H I know. <laughs> I was writing it down thinking to myself, how do I spell this? Um, so we've been working on onboarding tasks and Alex has been very helpful. Alex Ershengutter has been very helpful because he's been covering down there. So he and I have had a couple of discussions about what we can plan to have ready for her for Monday. And just a general idea of where to start, how to start so that we can try to be concise, but, but start getting some familiarity with regular tasks and then special tasks um, because it is it can be a very busy office and right now we're in the midst of some activity some fairly busy activity with um, conservation commission planning board zoning hasn't been quite as busy but conservation planning has been mm, busy. so absolutely. there's there's application processes that we want to get ahead of right and Alex is in a unique situation because he just had to learn how to do permitting and mm. takes and stuff. So yeah. that was one of the reasons I reached out and we sort of talked about that. Um, Carlene will be working with Jen Wallace, our assistant town clerk, and they'll they'll start. She she has a when she came in and did her contract, um, she met with Sarah and Jen to sort of get an idea of where they all wanted to start. So Jen and Sarah are going to work with her. And if there's anything they need, they are going to come to me next. Okay. Um, we're working on grant reimbursements right now. Certainly, we've got several on several that are out there. One of them is Green Communities. So Green Communities, we were still Green Communities. We had several projects. We just finished the street light project. I think it's finished. I haven't received money from Eversource though. So I had a conversation with Jane Fister. At is that um, is that uh, Green June thirtieth um, sensitive? Deadline. Yeah. Well, it would have been, except we waited for five months to hear from Eversource. So I talked to Jane yesterday, and I'm preparing some paperwork for her. But she put through a reimbursement of eighty some odd thousand dollars for us. So I'm going to talk to Brenda. Brenda's taking a couple of days off. She should be in tomorrow afternoon. Um, I'm going to talk to Brenda about that because one of the re one of the reasons this is kind of a sticky wicket is the green community folks encourage grants from other entities, and EverSource was willing to give us some money toward our street light conversion. Um, but it took them a long time to go through their review process because they changed all their staff in that office. So they had to start from scratch. And I got a confirmation from Tim Simmons at Eversource, but they needed additional paperwork from me and I haven't heard back from them. So I explained this to Jane and we had a good conversation. I sent her all the invoices I have for all the projects that were within that Green Communities grant. And she's gonna process a reimbursement, but I'm gonna talk to Brenda about it because we need to, we need to work on that finishing that grant, but we can't really do that. They won't, the state won't pay us 100% of the grant because we're waiting on the ever source money. So that was something of a nuance. Um, we've had several public records requests. We're hoping to get some help with those in terms of um, the new interim clerk starting and the new Perfect. Ass administrative assistant starting. Perfect, really um, glad to hear that. We've had some HR stuff that we've been following, both Jen and I, and we've had a lot of special projects. So that's sort of, they come in waves and they sometimes interrupt some of the stuff that we're doing. So those are the general things that are coming up. But with the closure of the fiscal year, we spent about three weeks scrambling to get as many bills as we could possibly think of 
and we tried to be very mindful chasing people and chasing girls. So we're hoping we didn't miss anything, but I said something to Brenda. I said, well, we're human just in case <laughs> we missed something, but we tried not to. And there are several purchasing things that are coming up. We've had some requests that I've been working on. We're not sure what's gonna happen with the, the new folks, whether gonna, we're gonna have to invest in resources. We won't know until we really get them in. Um, and then we've had some legal conversations and other types of meetings. I've got some meetings coming up next week um, for some items that are hanging out there. The, the cog had to finish its work. Mm -hmm. And there were some, I had a meeting and just daily meetings that we've been have a lot of meetings. You had also talked about the city and league uh, reaching out. There was a specific program that they were offering. I can't remember what this was now. It was uh, almost- Was it ICMA or was it- Yeah, it was the League of Cities, but they were doing a specific, um, you had mentioned it to me quickly. I found something. It was something like- back to my It email. starts with an R or something like that. I yeah. forget what it was, but- it was similar to what we had talked about and what we had seen before relating to the first, you know, the public comment section. And it'd be good to kind of look at that. I, I do did think find something because when I first got that email, um, I went looking because there's been a huge amount of, of, of interest in figuring out how each town should approach right. diversity, inclusion. Yep racism um, and different towns are handling it differently as right. our public comment guests mentioned. Um, and I did go looking and I found something. I'm gonna look back in my email because yeah. I know I sent it out. I do, I remember seeing it. Um, was it was a program. Yeah. I can't remember if it was ICMA or the other, the other League group. Of Cities. League of Cities, um, I'm almost positive. It was that. one of the two. And I went looking on purpose because yeah. I knew this question was going to come up. But different towns are doing it. Different towns they and are. cities and are doing it. And there's, you know, different. I mean, there's one thing for us to kind of say something, but it really is a community-led issue as well. And it's not, you know, so there's a there's different roles that people take. And some, you know, we can do only so much. We can always speak to an issue or that, but a lot of it is a grassroots thing from the community, really does a lot of that work. And I think that, you know, DIG is set up to do that with the, it's already a community organization. Right. So not that we wouldn't partake in some way, but I think a lot I, more I think work the, happens that way. What it is, is a packaged approach mm -hmm. that incorporates, you know, department, our departments and, but, and us, but also the community. Right. And it seemed to be very successful. I, I like the whole I, thing I do too. I mean, about. it felt, it didn't feel forced. Right. It didn't feel fake. It felt like it was heart. And it was before you know, you, 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 right. George Floyd or any Yeah, of it. it was. I mean, not it that was. it was before racism, right? Because it's always no, happening. No, but it was before but everything went. It's before everything kind of yeah. blew up last summer. And, um, but we really found it to be great. I, 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 anything to well, no, I was just going to say that I, I, with what's been happening since, um, you know, Supreme Court ruling on Dobbs. Uh, it's important that communities develop and and get in place um, the way to respond to these things properly, so that um, you're not, not trying to make it up when something happens. Well, that's happens. why right. we and like this. It, 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 it felt like we could tweak it so it was us and it wasn't forced. It was something that was truly heartfelt. And and right. I, I, I not, a, not a response to something right yeah. it, it was it was because it's, this is how we believe it's forward looking and, and it's because we right we, we respect our neighbors and, and part of yeah. it was history because you know yeah. history a lot of us are you know don't haven't had that kind of education um mm -hmm. exposure uh, even if we're reading stuff ourselves um yeah the history books are not really that accurate so um 
I, I've, I felt like it incorporated a lot of the true history yeah. and, um, but made it in a way that you could move forward without being forced to move forward. It's because you want to move forward. Right. And it was help. I mean, I, I all I can say it was, it was more heartfelt and sincere mm -hmm. to me. So we're, um, Casey's going to help us find this or? Yeah, there, yeah. There, there, it was yeah, about, there is some programs that they do. Yeah. Right. The question is, is how do you well, want wasn't to Wasn't it, wasn't it right. like, it was like fifteen thousand dollars. I forget. It was. I know it was quite a bit. It was quite but a bit of money. Is, it's worth that's the thing. This is one doing. thing that we need. And to that was three years ago. Absolutely. That because was, there's a lot going on. It's not like oh, we're going to just drop this right on everybody. No, no, no. We got to kind of work it, it, it had in. To, and, it had to be. You had to. You were incorporating and departments more of it and is, stuff. Yeah. Is more. And, um, again, community led versus yeah. staff yeah. led. But it was. It was. Yeah. This I was mean, three or four years ago. Three years ago, it was night. It was uh, January of 2020. Yeah. So. Or even 19. Two, no, I think it was 2020. Was it well, yeah, right. Yeah, January. Um, right. yeah. Gen it was before COVID hit in March. Yeah. But because um, we were all thinking, figuring, trying to figure out how we could get our insurance company to pay for part of it. Remember? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Maya. Yeah. Get Maya to pay for it. And I was actually thinking more about, um, you know, the procedurally is the town prepared do we have a you know something in 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 the town not necessarily training right. and i agree that community you know the library yeah. community groups right um, there should yeah. be a a response to these things when they do occur yeah i mean obviously um swastika, swastikas in particular i guess have been in town three different times in the last two years uh, and so you know, it's, it's something to be mindful just of, gross. but, uh, and, um, you know, if you could figure out, you know, the people who are responsible for doing it, if it's the same person, they probably need help, mm -hmm. you know, and you want to be able to just have it channeled the person to the right, right in the right path. So, um, and it, for, I know I need to be educated on, you know, if something occurs on private property, is it different than if it occurs in public Correct. property? And, What's exactly. the correct police response? Uh, what's the correct way right. to, to report these things? Um, so it's an educational opportunity for me in terms of mm -hmm. public response to it. But right, but I right. Do, I, do, I agree that the community has a big part to play and dig yeah. is in a good space. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, and if it's not dig, it's maybe it's an offshoot of dig that kind of yeah. it is also um, welcoming because it, you know some people have you know. Um, when you have a group together, like-minded, that are pushing for this, um, yeah. it can be really uncomfortable to let in people who don't feel like that. So right. maybe there's a separate yeah. offshoot or something where yeah. where people can still have a safe place, but also have a place where you're not so safe because these aren't yeah. safe topics to have right. no, discussions and, and, about. And absolutely, that's why that's, it needs to be multi multifaceted yes. response from the community. That's, absolutely. You know. Uh, I, I think the library has actually been doing a lot of positive things on this front with their Great. reading programs and, yeah. uh, you know, um, sort of topic specific, uh, how to talk about this or yep. books for children and so forth and Good. reading suggestions. So yeah, it's a definitely a community response and, sure. and a faith response from the mm -hmm. churches and yep. uh, synagogues and mosques, whatever, yeah. uh, you know, so. Okay. Sounds good. I, I just had a couple other things. Um, we are we got a grant for two hundred and ninety six thousand seven hundred fifty dollars uh, with Greenfield Montague uh, Shakespeare and Leverett. This is uh, another public health excellence grant. Greenfield is the lead. In case you don't have to do anything, <laughs> I meet weekly um, for the other grant that we got. The other three hundred thousand dollar grant. This is another three hundred thousand dollar grant. Chris wrote an excellent article um, in the recorder today, uh, but it's for five years uh, and that amount every year for five years. Um, and then it's renewable up to four years after that. And it's um, to increase capacity at first. So Good. we get a health agent. We agreed to, as a group, we've already met. We're gonna have a health agent and uh, um, more nursing hours. And um, so hopefully um, then we'll be able to get a social worker by next year. Mm -hmm. But 
you need to you have to have capacity first mm -hmm. you got to get everybody have more stuff um ability to handle our workload right and then we move on to newer kind of things so that was really exciting um that's going to make a huge difference in um our border health budget um basically can't i can't uh, replace what we already do, but it will certainly help us re, um, from incurring further costs. Mm -hmm. um, and I went to the state tech, uh, state technical committee meeting for NRCS last week. Um, they're focusing in on water, and um, that's going to be the the farm bill is very different this this round mm -hmm. this next year for farm bill. It's focusing almost on totally on water, um, excess water in the northeast lack of water everywhere else in the country. So we're actually setting up uh, through this technical committee, it sets priorities. So energy was our voted first, is one of our first highest priorities um, because all our farmers have energy needs and being able to operate. But then we can focus on water and water management. And that is pretty exciting for, you know, downtown here. Um, and then the other thing is uh, the Homeland Security AAR is moving along and we're meeting on Tuesday to have, a, you know, hopefully straight, make sure the draft of that is ready to go. So um, it's focusing on COVID, how uh, the county, four counties managed COVID. So it's pretty exciting. And then I just want to make sure that uh, upcoming regular meetings um, are listed. We have additional meeting on August 3rd. I just wanted to make sure that um, Tim and um, Trevor, are you aware of that? Because we were going to talk about emergency management. Yeah, you guys, you guys yeah. were going to talk. Yeah. I just want to make sure that you, that you, you have it on your account. time for that? Uh, we were just going to do six o'clock. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, six o'clock. But it's a single, meeting, single thought, yeah. topic. Yeah, EMD. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Did you say single topic, Carolyn? Single yes, topic. that's on Remember, tape. Remember, she said that. She it's said on that. tape. <laughs> well, we're trying to focus on some of this stuff, but we got to sort this out because it's a triple dip uh, La Nina year. So we we're go. going to have lots of storms potentially this this uh, August and September. <laughs> so. Casey's, we got. We have. Casey's we have to, still has Casey's things. finishing up here. Yeah. So we need to finish. Figure out that. Back at you, Casey. So, I wanted to throw a plug out there for the team in here that did an incredible job prepping that new website platform. Absolutely. I don't know if anybody's seen it, but the website. The website. Oh, for sure. Been on it. I'm Looks sure great. there's people that are going to hate it. I don't think so. I, I think it works really well. Oh God. So far, so good. <laughs> no. I will not hate it. Comments. Okay, well, you can hate it. I, I have so to say, I, I don't like right it. There, well, but... there's there's two places you can find it. And I actually went through this with... with so there's um, some education Jennifer. to happen, apparently. Oh. Yeah, with Jennifer, because I had to figure it out, too. Um, but there's some things that we tried to pull out. And she did. She and Pat did most of this. Pull out so it was easier to find. For instance, the link to a meeting is in the center of the calendar item now. Um, and... Jennifer thought it was easier if people could see the link, even if they look for the agenda down the bottom on the right hand side. Um, we're, they're working the things out. Yeah. But I have to say they've done an incredible job, and I want you guys to hear about it from me. Okay. Uh, I'm, eventually, I'm not, I will learn how to put something up on the website. I'm going to withhold my comments because it's I, new. Yeah. It's new. It's, it's problematic. There's it's technology, be Carolyn. There's going to be an, a, a period where we where we get used to it. Um, some things don't seem to be intuitive, but from the back end perspective, we're trying to figure that out. Um, that agenda, the calendar items are definitely something that are different. How that format is is different for everybody. So they're getting used to it. Too. Yeah, we'll figure Ugh. that out. Make sure that we can get that. Right I have that. But you have a little tag, you have little toggle buttons at the bottom. I get a, I get a, I get a play with it and figure it out. Okay. So I, one thing I, I had this conversation with personnel board about on Monday was vacancies because with Erica's mm -hmm. resignation, they're concerned mm -hmm. that they may not find enough people. Right. Um, 
So they had an idea and I'm talking it over with Jennifer to maybe put something up there that takes you directly to a vacancy list mm -hmm. so that we can try to get critic, get people directly to something that you need. Um, we're not sure how that's gonna play out, but this is one of those instances where you'll see something change on the website to meet a need. The other thing um, that's come up as a suggestion is um, have uh, a table on our election, you know, our local elections, have a table out in the foyer or something with all the different committees so people can pick up like mm -hmm. a bulleted sheet of what are our committees and then if it's of interest, people, then they can, you know, follow up with a conversation with any three of us or whatever. And um, because we have reappointments in June and to have vacancies in, you know, going into the fall is just terrible. Mm -hmm. So, and this maybe get people to be, to that be are fun. not involved might be get, have some interest. Yeah. Anything else, Casey? No? All right. Anybody? Can I have one small detail. Please. I wanted, I, I did write a, uh, an email to Jennifer and Pat saying that I thought they put in a heck of a lot of good work on the town website mm -hmm. and it's a living thing and it will evolve. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there will be things that each of us can find that we don't <laughs> think is Thanks, intuitive, <laughs> but um, it but, does. You know, the, it's very graphically pleasing, um, and I, I, I just think they did an, a really nice job. It, it's, it's difficult to please everyone, and, um, and so you know, I just felt it was important to say thank you to them. So yes, thank you. absolutely, great. Even though I can't use it, but <laughs> we'll get you there. We'll get you there. I actually think I actually asked Jennifer if she could do a quick tutorial for folks because. It is a lot. Different. Yeah, she was going to work on some she like was, Zoom meeting yeah. kind of things or it, tutorials. It could be a yeah. Zoom thing where she could just show you, like, talk you through the clicking. Yeah. As opposed to showing you how to do it. Because if she talks yeah. you through the clicking, it's more likely you'll remember how to do it. Yeah. 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 Okay. So. And, you know, the, the shortcomings of the previous web page uh, website yeah. were obvious to everyone who's ever been on a good website. Yeah. So, Give it two or three or four months. Yeah. And yeah. No, it, I, it will settle down. I mean, we got we have to figure out some way to get um, current public messages out. I mean, like right now, there's no. I, there's, I didn't mention mosquitoes because the only disease load mosquitoes have been out east for mm -hmm. West Nile. This is probably not a triple E, so we're not going to have anything on there. Hopefully this year, but it should be like a banner you know, watch out for ticks, watch out for mosquitoes, whatever, you know, something like that. <laughs> well, thank you to all the staff. I'll take a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Second. I will second it. All right. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. Thank Absolutely. you.